Everything seems good. Hey, everybody. Believe it or not, I'm in a hotel room. I guess let's just say that uh, certain things all of a sudden end me up and certain things just sort of teleported me into this hotel room, but I'm sure I'm back to my usual spot. Anyway. According to my Doctor Who watch here, turns out there's another uh, sci-fi review for me to do. Now, I've been thinking. Since, um, since most of the uh, sci-fi heroes always been uh, guys like Flash Gordon, Buck Rogers, John Carter, and all the others, but there was a certain female sci-fi hero which pretty much, um, pretty much, uh, made us think that maybe we should have some female sci-fi heroes instead of just the usual male. And the one I'm going to be reviewing for you today started out in a French comic book, and it's a cult classic today. And the movie I'm going to review for you today is none other than... Barbarella. Now, believe it or not, I remember watching the movie when I was young, but here's a little bit of a history that not many people don't even know. Now, not many people know that, um, that Barbarella started out as a comic book created by Jean-Claude Forrest. And it started back in 1962 and ended in 1964. And this is the comic book where she first started. And of course, another comic book. And not many people know that uh, Barbarella, the model they took the uh, took her look from, was they took her look from none other than. Bridget Bardot. Mais oui, ooh la la, Bridget Bardot. Menefico. What was that? No, that's Spanish. Oh well. Petite. Now, uh, not many people know when Bridget Bardot got really popular enough. And uh, there was this uh, French director who was once dated Bridget Bardot for a while, and then he dumped her, and now is dating uh, Jane Fonda. At first, they wanted to make Barbarella be cast by uh, Bridget Bardot, but sadly, uh, the French director had a bit of a pass between him and Bridget, so it didn't happen. And the uh, the guy who made the uh, made the movie was created by uh, Dilo De Laurentiis. That's right, the same guy who made Flash Gordon. Flash, <sighs> he'll save every one of us. <laughs> I still have this movie, but in 1968. That's when they made this. Starring Jane Fonda and Barbarella, Queen of the Galaxy. Now, the biggest difference between the movie and the, and the, um, the comics, well, looks, actually, but the mission was, and of course the big difference between uh, Barbarella and the movie and the Barbarella and the comics, Barbarella was actually a fugitive who decided to do some good. So she's pretty much like a female Han Solo, while this one, she is actually a ranger of some sort, sent by the president of Earth. <clears throat> and they wanted her to meet a scientist who goes by the name of Duran Duran. And I'm hungry like the wolf. <laughs> yeah, Duran Duran reference. And in this uh, story, she ends up in the galaxy, 
Now, the biggest difference between the comics and the movie here, the comic books, I would say, is pretty much R-rated because it's an erotic comic book. But when they uh, made the movie, they made it less erotic. But it was pretty obvious what she was doing. In the comics, she uh, landed, she got the weapons from the, um, got the weapons from the president, and of course this wrist translator so she can translate different languages from other people. And then when she landed in this one island, she meets a bunch of uh, orphan kids who kidnaps her and trying to launch their uh, man-eating dolls. Trying to eat her to death, even though it was kind of slow. But the dolls were really creepy. And then she gets saved by this uh, bearded guy who wears this suit who looks completely fur. I mean, I bet he sweated inside that suit. And um, <clears throat> after he saved her, they went to an agreement that they make love. Of course, it was in the movie, so it didn't show anything. Although there was one certain scene it did do, though on the, the beginning of Barbarella where she was in her spacesuit and she was taking it off on zero gravity. You could almost see her naked, but sadly the credits kind of covered her body. Hmm. Imagine that. Anyway, after that, she uh, went to this place that they call the Labyrinth. Dance, magic, dance, magic, dance, magic, dance. <laughs> owned by a professor, and also met, uh, met an angel-like guy who goes by the name of Holgarth. Now, he's blind, and the difference between the comics and the movie, in the movie, he's blind, but in the uh, comic books, he wears a blindfold. And, of course, she slept with Holgarth. Let's just say she got touched by an angel. <laughs> <clears throat> anyway. And then all of a sudden she went back, she uh, entered the city. And then all of a sudden she meets this uh, evil lady, played by uh, the girl who hangs out with the Rolling Stones. Now, in the comic book, the, ba the, uh, the lady who rules the city, in the comics she actually had one eye patch. But the actress who played her, she only wore it once, and then throughout the rest of the movie, she kept wearing other clothing. And of course, hinting that she might be kind of gay, because she had been hitting on uh, Barbarella. And then she uh, may, and then she meets uh, the keen scientist, who is like um, an advisor. And the advisor just decided to torture her by putting her into a world. I mean, in a in a giant in a giant uh, dome, overrun by birds, which they are parakeets, and um, the parakeets were kind of tearing her apart. But uh, all of a sudden, there was a a trap door on the bottom, and she fell down, and meet the guy who saved her life, and his name was Del Dano. <laughs> Seriously, Del Dano. And, of course, since he saved her, I mean, he tried to act kind of, uh, you know, dashing, good-looking, and trying to take charge. He tried to open the door with the lever, but the lever broke, so he kept telling the guy, The door. The door. The door! <laughs> and, of course, the only way he would reward her is do the new, new way instead of the old-fashioned way, by taking the pills and put their hands together. Hmm. And of course, while they had their hands together, their hair starts curling up and steam were coming out of their hands. That's weird. Anyway, after that, one thing about uh, uh, Jane Fonda is that she always keeps changing her uh, costume again and again throughout the whole entire movie. You know, the first time I ever saw... Um, Jane Fonda, I thought she was really pretty and very attractive. Let's just say I was fond of Jane Fonda, but I don't think Jane Fonda's fond of me. But I wonder if Bridget Fonda is fond of me. <laughs> anyway, 
Theodana gave her something that uh, would uh, give her access into the temple. And um, turns out it's an, it's, it's an invisible key. An invisible key to open the invisible door. Well, that makes sense. Anyway, she found Holgarth almost tortured, but he's doing okay. He'll be fine. And then all of a sudden, she meets the, um, the guy in charge, and now he decided to take her into the pleasure machine, where she gives her complete pleasure before she dies. But it turns out the machine short-circuited and got destroyed. Hmm. I guess, uh, I guess the force is strong in this one. <laughs> and then, and then when the translator, um, the scientist who tried to torture her, tripped over the uh, translator and it beeped so it turns out that's Duran Duran all along and the biggest difference in the comic book Duran Duran's character he had one eye I mean he was just he just had like a problem with his eye so he always looked at things with one eye he wasn't two eyed and it turns out that he went crazy and wanted to conquer the whole entire place and Barbarella was remained trapped by the lady who was in charge and she decided to destroy him by uh, burning down the entire city. And the rebels showed up. And of course, make a long story short, the entire uh, building was about ready to uh, melt and be destroyed. So, Hogarth came up, showed up, and helped uh, Barbarella and the, uh, the queen out of there by hanging on to them and flew up into the sky. And of course, uh, one thing that uh, she was kind of curious, she asked him, Hogarth, even though she tortured you, why did you save her? And he says, an angel has no memories. Well, how come he remembers Barbarella? <laughs> anyway, the movie was a cult classic. I remember watching it a long time ago. Give it a, you guys should give it a chance. It's a cult classic today. Even I also heard that back in 2004, somebody made a musical version of Barbarella. Hmm. I guess Barbarella is getting pretty popular. I mean, heck. Check this out. Dynamite Entertainment, the same company who uh, own all of the uh, pulp heroes and comic strip heroes. I mean, um, Dynamite Entertainment did... I mean, own Flash Gordon and Buck Rogers, and they made a brand new comic book series of Barbarella. Started back in uh, 2017. And another thing I started to notice, I heard that uh, somebody's talking about doing a, uh, a brand new uh, remake of Barbarella. I mean, I heard about it, but I don't know if they're going to go along with it or not. The same thing with uh, Flash Gordon. I heard somebody were planning to do a remake of, uh, of Flash Gordon, but I haven't heard anything since. And one thing I thought it was really strange, it was this, uh, this famous uh, singer, Ariana Grande. If you ever look at Ariana Grande's music video called the Break Free, featured uh, Zed, you can see some of the features from the music videos that pretty much uh, reference Barbarella. Although the alien design looks pretty neat. Anyway, I have nothing against uh, Ariana Grande. She's a really good singer. She's a very lovely lady. I mean, when I saw Ariana Grande on uh, Saturday Night Live, and she did pretty good impressions of famous singers, I was impressed. And she even appeared in the Jimmy Fowler show, where uh, she did other impressions of other singers. I was impressed, except one problem. It turns out that um, she made a horrible comment on Twitter, saying that she wishes that her fans would just kill themselves would just die. You know, that's one thing I do have a problem. I hate celebrities who treats fans horribly. 
I mean, they don't understand that the fans are the backbone to our popularity. Without them, we wouldn't continue on doing what we do best. Entertain. Anyway, this is my review of Barbarella. If you like this review, please leave a comment down below. Hit like and subscribe for more. And uh, sooner or later, there's going to be more sci-fi reviews. And this time, I'm going back home. Soon. Pretty soon. So, um... Later, guys.